it's Kim at Middle of the Book March, and because I know that you all were dying to know what I thought of the octofinals of the BookTube Prize for Translated Fiction Group A, here it is. You have to wait no longer. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to go from my number six selection to my number one, so from worst to best, but I'm not going to spend a real lot of time on the last the bottom three, because I would rather talk about the top three. And by the time you see this video, the results will have come out. And <laughs> only one out of my top three made it to the quarterfinals, and it was my number three. So I am not happy, Robert. I'm kidding. I'm not happy. <laughs> so what did I think of the octofinals in translated fiction? Before I tell you my selections, this was a great experience because I read books I never, ever would have found on my own. And I specifically chose translated fiction for that very reason. I wanted to expose myself to other literature and to literature from around the world. And going forward in the next upcoming rounds outside of the quarterfinals, um, <clears throat> if I take part in the judging, I will also, again, choose translated fiction. I loved it. I loved that experience, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And quite honestly, five out of the six books were novellas. So how can you beat that? Bonus! Okay, let's go. I, I, As I'm talking, I will put the picture of the six books. I also put that in as my intro for Group A. Translated Fiction Group A. Um, and in no, this is no particular order. The books were Whereabouts by Jhumpa Lahiri, an eye novel by Mene Mizumura, uh, Tomorrow They Won't Dare to Murder Us by Joseph Andrus, Disquiet by Zulfu Livanelli, Love in the Big City by Sung, Sang Young Park, and Voices in the Evening by Natalia Ginsberg. So let me talk to you about my number six book very briefly, and that was an eye novel by Mine Mizumura. She is a Japanese author, and the book was translated by Juliet Winters Carpenter from the Japanese in March of 2021. Uh, this book bored me to tears. It was the longest book. It was over 300 pages, and it basically doesn't do anything. It's an entire book of reflection on the author's, <clears throat> excuse me, auto fiction about her 20 years in the United States. Her parents brought her and her sister to the U.S. to New York uh, from Japan and she regretted it from day one. And for 20 years she's been planning on getting back to Japan. Her, <clears throat> her mother left her father and it now is has a new man and the father is in a nursing home with Alzheimer's or dementia. All it is is her reminiscing about the past and trying to figure out how to get back to Japan and who's going to take care of her father and what's going to happen to her sister. I was bored out of my mind and uh, I don't need a plot driven book but this also was not written in in a way that kept me interested. So that was my number six. What was my number five? My number five was Disquiet by Zulfu Livanelli and this was translated from the Turkish by Brendan Freely in, uh, came out, published in English in June of last year, 2021. And this was not a bad book. It was just um, uh, forgettable. And this was the story of, um, it's, a, it's the contemporary Middle East through the stories of Malakanaz, a Yazidi Syrian refugee, and Hussein, a young man from the Turkish city of Mardin near the Syrian border. I'm reading my notes that I have down here. Uh, passionate about helping others, Hussein begins visiting a refugee camp to tend to the thousands of poor and sick streaming into Turkey, fleeing ISIS. Um, he falls in love with Melek Melek Melekinez or Meleknes, and the, his family considers her the devil. Um, it was a good story. It was a harrowing, um, disturbing story to read. Important because it's based on real life, real events. Um, but it, once I was done reading it, I didn't think it was horrible, but I just thought it, it wasn't that memorable. It, it was a little forgettable for me out of the six books. And so that's why that one was number five. 
Number four was Whereabouts by Jumpa Lahiri, and she translated this from the Italian herself. And this book was published in the U.S. in uh, April of last year, 2021. And this is the story, kind of an unnamed Italian woman who's kind of wandering through her days, wandering her neighborhood, um, talking about the different friendships she has, relationships, people she meets in her town, in her city, um, kind of boring, kind of um, the accounts of daily life. Um, I don't know. She's got a boyfriend here and there talking about her work friends. Um, it was okay. It was fine. I, it wasn't special. And that's why I was at number four. Okay, now my top three. Number three is Tomorrow They Won't Dare to Murder Us by Joseph Andrus. And this was translated from the French by Simon Lesser or Lesser. Uh, and it came out in English last year, February of 2021. Um, this was a very good book. And this was a, based on a true story of in the Algerian War. It's the time during the Algerian War. And there's a revolutionary that plants a bomb in a shed on the grounds of a factory. And the bomb fails to explode. However, he is turned in by somebody. We don't know who. And he is arrested for possibly going to commit murder or terrorist activity. Um, and he, the entire book is him trying to get the, uh, the authorities trying to get the names of his friends and his co-conspirators in these terrorist activities. And he's kind, not an innocent bystander, but the bomb was not live. And he t says he wasn't planning on killing anybody. Well, I, th I th think the bomb was live. But he was he put it in a shed where he didn't believe anybody would go near. It was basically to get attention. So he wasn't a murderer and he's not a terrorist. But the book is kind of the legal proceedings to um, kind of accuse him and prosecute him for this crime and to sentence him to death. And this was a really interesting book because it was uh, talking about a time in history that I knew nothing about. I know absolutely nothing about the Algerian war and what it meant for Muslim Algerians. Um, what what relationship the French had with Algeria and vice versa and colonization by the French. It was good. It was a very good book. But I thought the first top two were better than this one. But it was good. I, I do recommend that one. My number two was Voices in the Evening by, by Natalia Ginsberg. And this is uh, was translated from the Italian by D.M. Lowe. It came out um, in the U.S. last year in May of 2021. And uh, this this book has been around for a little bit. It's not a brand new, uh, contemporarily written book. Um, but it was published in the U.S. Uh, last year. And this is in a, an Italian town after the Second World War. And this is Elsa, who lives in her in her family home with her parents, the home that she was born in. She's 27. She's not married. Um, the, her family, her parents have anxiety over her marital status and her, her status in the family. She comes from a large family of siblings. And the book goes to talk about each of her siblings and their lives and their relationships with loved ones and spouses and children. Um, it's a, it's a, an Italian village and there's a lot of village gossip about f who's a fascist and who, what political party this one belongs to and who got taken away and who was murdered by, um, government authorities. And it's a, it's a very interesting comparison between the after effects of war and searching out fascist traitors in your own midst and everyday family life and it's such a weird comparison in a weird context talking about the older italian generations of people who are most concerned with who's dead or alive who's sick or healthy who's getting married they are deeply concerned with getting these young people married off and having everybody have a happily ever after the end but it was an interesting, she, the way she wrote it, to me, I thought her, it, her writing was exceptionally well done. The story was so well crafted. It was such an excellent look and perspective comparing those, those, those two different lives of domestic life and 
political life. Um, I thought it was so interesting and it was very well written and it kept me reading. Uh, and I really enjoyed her writing. I think I might go and look for some more books by Natalia Ginsburg. And my number one is Love in the Big City by Sang Young Park, a South Korean author. The book was translated from the Korean by Anton Her, and it came out in English last year in November 2021. I really liked this book a lot, and this was my number one, but it didn't even make it to the quarterfinals, and that's why I'm so mad. This book has been all over the place, actually. And I was convinced that it would move on. And I'm really surprised that it didn't. I have to double check unless I'm wrong. I don't think I'm wrong because I looked a couple of times at the the, res the Octo Final Results video. This is the book um, of the nighttime life in Seoul, South Korea. And this is, let's see. I don't know if Young is cynical, he's fun, he's he's a partier, young um, South Korean guy who just loves to be with his friends and hang out and go out and drink and smoke and party. But he's also looking for love at the same time. And uh, he he's a gay man and he's living with his school um, friend who's a girl. And they are best friends and they kind of work off of each other and support each other, party with each other, um, watch each other form relationships. And when his friend finally ends up forming a serious relationship and gets married to her husband, he feels kind of left out in the cold. And he feels like she's dumped all of the things that they had in common together for a traditional life. And he just doesn't know where to turn after that. Um, he's dealing with isolation and a little bit of depression, um, but just looking for somebody. And there's a long line and a long string of men and boyfriends. Um, he thinks he falls in love with a very narcissistic uh, man. And the book is basically following his, his process to find out how he can love himself while also looking for companionship. He's looking for his person. And I thought this was so well done. It was such an incredible look into this individual's life and his love process, um, especially exactly like the title says, Love in a Big City. It's It can be impossible to find a person in a very small, rural, isolated town but then it can also be impossible to find a person in a gigantic city of millions of people. Uh, it's it's such an interesting opposite, polar opposites of context and setting, but the problems are the same. So I thought that was so interesting. I loved, I just loved the story. I loved the, I loved the writing. I love how he depicted a character who was very much like himself, like the author himself, based on articles and interviews that I read about him. And so I thought this is, it's just, it's a, it was a fun read, but it was also poignant and heartbreaking at the same time. But it, it reminded me of, you know, not exactly me as a young person, but parts of his life I could relate to that some, some of those things are things that we all go through, all part of the human condition, if that doesn't sound like a cliche, because it often does. But um, but I really enjoyed this book, Love in the Big City. And uh, I was really, really sorry to see that it didn't move forward. I was thought, it, I thought, I thought it absolutely would. So what a surprise, what a surprise to me. So that's it. Um, we'll see what happens. The, uh, the quarterfinals are now happening and the octofinal results are posted. I will put a link to the BookTube prize video in the description below. And um, I will also list my books in the, you know, going from six to one, how I rated them. And uh, that's it for my results video. I hope you guys, if any of you are interested in translated fiction, take a look at, at my books that I rated and go on the BookTube Prize website, which I will also link below, and take a look at some of those translated novels. They Some of them look so good. Um, and it's... 
It's such a great experience if you're not used to looking for books originally printed in a country or a language different from yours. And that's what I have found as I was so happy that I decided to do this because it opened up the choices for literature and it opened up um, my reading experiences to read about lives that I never would have come into contact with otherwise. And I think that's what literature does for us. So that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed um, my ratings. Let me know if you disagree or agree with me in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.